All right, time to take care of some Patreon requests. And uh, for starters, we're going to be doing uh, one from uh, Imaginate, who asked me to do my top 10 favorite Cartoon Network shows. As always, uh, if you guys would like to have a Patreon request done, just hit the link below. Head on over to my Patreon, where you guys can hit the third tier. That'll allow you access to do so, as well as check out the uh, uh, other uh Tier, other exclusive tiers on the videos as well. Um, I've been doing episode reviews of Suicide Squad Isekai. I've been doing episode reviews of Star Wars The Acolyte. Thank God that's almost over. And uh, I've got other videos on there too. Anyway, so yes, unlike my other ones, which were just like 10 video, like a list of 10 favorite where there wasn't really a ranking, here there's a definitive ranking. So a couple ground rules first and foremost. Um, as always with these top 10 lists, um, please, uh, you know, please keep in mind this is just my personal list. If you think a, a show should be higher or lower on the list, that's totally fine. Um, I'm always, in, I'm always excited to hear where you guys stand on your own opinions, and I'm always excited to hear your list for the top ten. Another thing that I will mention: I will not be ha this show. This will only be focusing on Cartoon Network original shows. So it won't have um, shows from like uh, Toonami or Maguzi or Adult Swim. So we're not gonna. If it, it, I did contemplate having uh, Adult Swim uh, shows on here, <coughs> excuse me, but I decided that's for the. Uh, I th I thought for the best if I ever get a list of like top ten Adult Swim shows, I would probably be like I would have its own list. Um, although I don't know how I would do a top 10 uh, Adult Swim cartoon because they're all like either a drug-induced night, uh, you know, drug-induced high nightmare or they're now getting into really good shows. You know, really like cool, they're like branching out more. Anyway. Um, uh, so, keep, again, if you think, it, this is just my personal list, so we're only going with Cartoon Network original shows as well. So let's get started with number 10. And yes, I have the list right here because I know I'd forget. Number 10, Symbionic Titan. A show that was gone way too soon. Symbionic Titan was a brilliant mixture of kaiju action, uh, high school life, um, and some brilliant storytelling. And I think Gennady Tartakovsky, um, it was criminal that the show never got a definitive ending. Um, although Kennedy, uh, Kennedy has said, you know, Tartakovsky has said multiple times, multiple times that he would love to come back to it. At the same time, he's also like, I also, he also knows like how the game works. So I do tragically think we'll, like, we will never get, uh, this show again. Like we will never get this show again, but you know, it's always fan fiction, right? <laughs> but also... How and also just sidebar, how did they get away with uh, that dance scene, and not like y'all know the one I'm talking about? How did they get away with that? Anyway, I digress. Number nine is a interesting one because it's usually one you wouldn't think of when it comes to car favorite Cartoon Network shows. But keep in mind this is my list, so my rules. Number nine, the Looney Tunes show. The Lo I've always had an affinity for the Lo for Looney Tunes. I have. I've always had an affinity for it, and when this show came out, and it did something v like vastly different from your typical um, uh, Looney Tunes show, rather than make it like a bunch of slapstick um, and, and you know quick writing, it's treated like a sitcom. It's treated almost like Looney Tunes, but with fra like a Frasier element. But it's still Looney Tunes, so you can still do insane stuff with it. And the writing, uh, writing in this show and the comedic timing, mwah. This was another criminally underrated show. I really enjoyed this series. I think it has some brilliant um, writing. I think it has some great comedy to it. Daffy, probably, this is probably the funniest Daffy has ever been in any show. And I love how, uh, how his chemistry with Bugs. And the two of them just bounce off of each other so well. Like, Bugs is the straight man in the series. Daffy's the crazy roommate. And they gave him a girlfriend, Tina, who he plays off very well uh, as well. And also, say what you want. I'm I'm sorry, everyone uh, who had a, you know, who had a fetish for Lola in from, because of Space Jam. She's a lot funnier in here. And she's a lot better of a character in here. Like, again, I... The writing in this show is amazing, and I love what they did with all of the characters. 
Um, yeah, absolutely just great series. Um, again, another one that was gone too soon. Now we're going into some classics. Starting with Dexter's Lab. There is no show that that I have seen that has some of the best anim... Well, I've seen gr better other shows with greater animation, but like at the time, that kind of level of animation done um, and that style of storytelling and also mixing like fun sci-fi 50s theme to like superhero stories to like mechs you can clearly see Tartar this is like the thing that got Tartakovsky this and another show um, clearly got uh, Tartakovsky's name in the books this show has some great com comedy some great um, some great uh, just fun episodes and some jokes that when you go back, you're like, "Hey, oh, how did I miss that?" <laughs> you are uh, like, there are points in this series, in this series, where I've gone back and watched episodes where I'm just like, "What the, f what, huh?" Anyway, so now we move on to number seven. Number seven, uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Courage the Cowardly Dog probably awoke every per every spooky kid in the nation. This came out, like, this could not have come out at a more perfect time. Like, it came out in the era of, like, Goosebumps. It came, well, I think Courage came out, like, the tail end of the Goosebumps hype, but it was still in that group. Like, this sh this show is responsible, along with, like, Goosebumps and Ah Real Monsters, to get kids into horror, like, make this generation of horror fans. Like, Courage, I have no doubt, has the reason for it. This show got away with so much, and also had a lot of heart. Like the star, uh, the uh, the Star Squid episode, yeah, that that will make you tear up. <laughs> um, also with Courage's family, there's a lot of great. There's a lot of also. I love the Buster Keaton and like Charlie Chaplin kind of storytelling. Um, the creators did with with Courage. There is a great interpret. There's like great. Um, work with courage where he conveys whole story like a whole sentence with just mimery i mean granted super animated but still also return the slab or suffer my curse i'm not gonna i'm sorry but y'all know that one if you <laughs> all right moving right along to uh, we're now at the halfway point with uh our next one and that is powerpuff girls did you think this wasn't going to be on the list at some point Powerpuff Girls was a show that had so much brilliant action and and, and uh, animated series that had action like a level of violence to it that you had not seen in a while. And keep in mind, this is this was probably some, like Cartoon Network's whole thing was that was probably meant to be like geared towards girls. And then they're like, oh boys, it's one of the, it was like at the MLP effect before the MLP effect, um, but. The series definitely had like a level of um, just this high energy, some great comedy, and some of the best action you have ever seen. Like, I'm I'm gonna say something a little heretical, um, and some of you guys will definitely disagree with me on this, but <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm not afraid to say it. I think Powerpuff Girls had some some fights that were better than Dragon Ball Z fights. There, I said it. Probably because they didn't stand around for like three episodes talking about it. It was more like, yeah, or let people power up. It was more like, hey, I'm just gonna fly in your face and fucking end you. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so there you go. At number, uh, there you go. At number six, Powerpuff Girls. Now we're at the top five. Number five, Steven Universe. Steven Universe, and yes, I already know some people in the comments are like, oh, Steven Universe isn't so great. I watched this two-hour, you know, presentation of why Steven Universe sucks. First off, I don't, like, I don't care. I've had my reservations about Steven Universe, too, and I'm not gonna admit, I'm not gonna deny that that show isn't, you know, a, a, you know, is, isn't without its flaws. But at the same time, I'm also not going to take the word of a two-hour video essay from a person who has um, been confirmed to be a pathological liar and a child molester. So I'm, that's all I'm going to say on that. 
because I've kind of noticed whenever I bring up Steven Universe or anything, I've noticed some commenters parrot that exact video and that person. So I don't really give a shit about it. Is Steven Universe perfect? No. Do I have problems with it? Yes. Am I going to... Uh, do I still love this show? Absolutely. This show... Um, and... This show has so much beautiful... It has beautiful animation, amazing themes, and do I think they stuck the landing every time? No. Do I think the Pink Diamond thing should have been better? And, you know, should have been told... Uh, do I think Rose Qu Quartz is, uh, did nothing wrong? Oh, fuck you, yeah, that. <laughs> yes, Rose Quartz did everything wrong. Um, and also, do I think she, uh, she, uh, she should have been Pink Diamond? I kind of do, but, like, what's done is done. Yeah. So this show... This show does have its flaws, but I think the, the good that this show did, um, and the... F and the universe, no pun intended, it created, um, and the effect it had for the rest of the series and for other shows um, outweigh the bad. That's just that's just how I personally feel. So Steven Universe at number five. Anyway, um, moving on to number four. Number four is Teen Titans. Not Teen Titans Go. I'm talking OG Teen Titans. And I've said this before. I'm just going to go on this quick tangent. If you still hate Teen Titans Go after all these years it's been out, bruh, bruh you got to let that shit go. As, as Buddha once said, you got to let that shit go. Um, it's... The, the, the Teen Titans Go thing, I've watched episodes, and the fu it's actually pretty funny. It's not good. The show I don't like, but, like, the episodes I've seen of Teen Titans Go, there's some legit com great comedy here. That Beetlejuice crossover? Perfection. And it's very clear that they use that as a mobile for the other stuff. Um, I did watch the um, Warner Brothers 100th Anniversary in the Lego episode. Whenever they did crossovers, that's where I think they did the best. I think that's where the writing was really the best, but I have seen like several other episodes and I feel like the show actually has some great com like some comedic timing. Is it better than the original show? Fuck no. But I feel like if I uh, like and I'm not going to actively watch Teen Titans Go, but like if they're crossing over with something, I'll give it a mm, What's going on over here? Anyway, so let's get back to the actual good show. Teen Titans. Teen motherfucking Titans. This show was the shit. This show best action, a phenomenal storytelling. And also, I know a lot of people like to block out uh, like block out a lot of things and say like Teen Titans was grown up and had adult and you know, adult themes to it, and it did. But I think you all forget that it also had funny episodes too. Like I don't know, the Tofu Alien episode. Did we all just forget that one? Did we all just forget the episodes with um Control Freak? Um did we forget there are ep full ass episodes where it's nothing but complete ridiculousness. And y'all just forgot, uh, casually forgot that. And those, and, you know, there is some funny themes even in the adult, in the more, like, mature themed episodes. But when it got mature, damn. Also, I'm pretty sure, like, 90% of us, uh, yours truly included, not just saying, um, probably had a realize they like, they like goths when they all saw Raven. Right? Like we all, like we all looked at Raven and went, "Oh, neat." <laughs> I, I like goths now. <laughs> and it's like you basically chose your fate when you picked Raven over Starfire. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but the series itself, also another reason why it's so high on this list, is because. One of the major reasons why it's so high here is also because this show also helped me get more into comics. You see, my dumbass when I started watching Teen Titans was that it was focused on Robin, who I knew is Batman, you know, and the other characters were like original characters. Well, I didn't know until I cracked open a DC encyclopedia at my in my library in high school that these were actual characters in the DC universe. And I started to read more about them. I started to learn more about them. And that's what got me into deeper and deeper into comics. So, if it weren't for Teen Titans, you probably wouldn't have a YouTube channel at all. 
this I wouldn't probably be Mr. Multiverse. I'd probably be something else and a lot boring, more boring. So yeah, thanks Teen Titans. Now we move on to the top three. And at number three, we have Duck Dodgers in the 24th and the half century. I know, another one that was like, what? <laughs> yeah, Duck Dodgers is a hilarious show. The Green Lantern crossover is, is hilarious. The, they had fucking Megadeth show up. Um, there's whole episodes where they parody um, the Six Million Dollar Man. This show clearly did not even know its target audi audience. Hell, there's even a joke where um, they even make a Samurai Jack parody. And what was an, there was one episode where they're making a parody to a show from the '60s, and Duck Dodgers literally looks at the camera and goes, "Once again, I have alienated our target audience." So they knew what they were doing. Um, if you want to talk about hilarious, this show is fucking knee-slapping. It is that good in terms of humor. It is a beast when it comes to comedic timing. And this show is god-tier in terms of like how funny... I, again, I'm talking about the humor, but that's all it was. Um, this definitely... Is, this show is criminally underrated, if you ask me. This is a criminally underrated show. And I... <laughs> I... Like, you want to know how much I love this show? Come here. Like, I'll show you. Um... I went out of, out of my fucking way to get the Blu-ray. I don't even know if you can find this anymore. I found this, like, online. And I looked again. It's gone. <laughs> So, I don't know, like, it's in, I don't know if you can find this anywhere, but, like, yeah, I just, I just had, I had to get it. It was, like, 40 bucks, but it was, like, money well spent, if you ask me. Oh. So, there you go. Duck Dodgers. Now we move on to number two. And number two is Samurai Jack. What can I say about Samurai Jack that hasn't been said already? Perfection in animate in animation, storytelling, action, all of that. One of the greatest shows to ever grace Cartoon Network and probably animation history. This show, while I uh, while you know the final season does have its misgivings from the Adult Swim final series does have its misgivings. This show is nothing short of phenomenal. It's a it was a phenomenal show. It could tell a whole story without uttering a single word. They did that multiple times where Jack didn't even say a single word. And it was all done by, you know, his own, like, actions and whatnot. And the animation told a story. And you see all of that. You know, Gennady, like, this is where Gennady, like, Gennady Tartakovsky's, you know, work really, we saw what he's capable of as a storyteller. You see that now in Primal. You see that now in, in Unicorn. You see that... In, all, in this series. It all stems from here. It's a beautifully masterful way of storytelling. And honestly, it ushered in the era of... I feel like it really ushered, uh, like inspired and usher, helped usher in the animated shows we have today. So there you go. But there is one show that stands above, head and shoulders above the rest. There is one show, in my opinion is my all-time favorite when it comes to these series. Um, and that, ladies... Uh, um, uh, and, th and that, ladies and gentlemen, is none other than Ed, Ed, and Eddie. The When you ask me what the quintessential Cartoon Network show is, I'm always going to say um, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Like, it's always going to be Ed, Ed, and Eddie, no matter what. Animation, perfect. Um, the... Um, writing and comedy, perfection. It is the closest this modern audience will ever get to the Three Stooges. There is something about that show that is so wholesome, yet also so just insane about it. Like, that show may, uh, made us as, like, when we were kids growing up at, and watching this show, we could only think about our uh, us going out with our friends into the woods or out in the out in public um, and keep when I was growing up, I grew up in a similar situation. I had friends, I had my brother, and we all had this, it was like a, it wasn't a gated community, it was like a little housing complex, it was like a little group of housing, and we'd all hang out with the other friends and just go on 
these kind of adventures out in the like a woods or like this open space. It was just, it was very much like that. The only thing missing was Steve, it was trying to fraud money for jawbreakers. There was that. Um, but still, also I'm pretty sure, cycling back to what I said about Raven, I'm pretty sure we, when we all we all sealed our fates when we picked Marie over the other one, over the other Kanker sisters. Am I right, guys? And girls? Um, anyway. <laughs> So there you go. Those are my top 10 favorite Cartoon Network shows. Uh, you guys tell me in the comments below, what are your top 10 uh, favorite Cartoon Network shows? And like I said, this is just my personal list, and I'm always excited to hear yours. Um, but anyway, just comment below, let me know. Other than that, I'd like to thank uh, Imaginate for, the, for his Patreon request, as well as continued patronage. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in Multiverse.